guys, how are you doing today? I realize it's been a while since I sat before you and I chatted with you about anything. Um, the reason for that was because I was on vacation in Puerto Rico. I was enjoying a wonderful week back home and a week was way too short. Like next time I really have to go for two weeks or maybe even a month. But anyway, I had recorded a podcast before I left, but I managed to delete it while I was uploading, um, not uploading it, I was exporting it to be able to upload it. I managed to delete the podcast. So whilst I'm not going to be recording a podcast today, I am, I am going to share some yarny goodness with you guys. And if you've watched any of my two previous podcasts, you will have already heard something about Knit Crate. Now, Knit Crate is a monthly subscription box that's been making the rounds on Instagram and on YouTube. And since I am approaching the last I guess I should say monthly subscription box. I wanted to give a good, honest review on Knit Crate. Now, Knit Crate did approach me to um, review these items. You will find an affiliated link down below and a 20% discount code. So if you choose to access um, the Knit Crate website through my link and purchase something, I will get a small commission. So I'm just letting you guys know. However, they have not paid me to give a review of their product. So anything I say is my own opinion. It hasn't been paid for it. It's completely unbiased and it's just full, full on me. So before I begin the actual review, I want to just read to you guys a little bit about Knit Crate so you can familiarize with yourselves with what it is if you haven't done so already because I know Sandra um, who is Cherry Heart on YouTube and Instagram she receives a knit crate Elizabeth from Earl Grey Crochet receives a knit crate and um, recently Rosina from Zines and Roger podcast also receives a knit crate so as I mentioned knit crate is a monthly subscription box you can even find an app um, let me lower the, that'll be better for you guys. You can even find an app for the Knit Crate subscription, monthly subscription box. And you know, it works like any other monthly subscription. Um, it's very affordable. They have a lot of um, different offers and different price ranges, but you always get good quality yarn. And I think that's the most, um, that's the most important thing. So do excuse me while I read off of my phone because I want to read you the why, you know, the little spiel, the why we do what we do. So you can find this on the Knit Crate website. Just go to knitcrate.com. You can also access their blog there so you can find some inspiration with things to do with their yarns. So we are driven by the dedicated enthusiasm by makers of the fiber arts community and believe in sharing this passion with as many people as possible. Independent dyers and designers are at the heart of our industry and we are continually developing programs to collaborate with them and create unique experiences. As our community continues to grow, we are committed to being a greater source of source for good in the industry and of creative and inspiration for makers. So if you go to the knitcrate.com, like I said, you'll find information in all the boxes that they have available for monthly subscriptions. So you can buy just that month or you can subscribe um, for three months, six months, a year. They've got different ranges. Now, now that I've read that to you, I'm going to talk about the boxes that I got and what I plan to do with them because not all of them will be made into the patterns provided. So each of the boxes that I received um, has been different if I'm not mistaken. I've got all the information for you guys here. 
So the first box that I received was the Knit Crate Contemporary box. And the yarn is La Brebis, Marl Sock 100% Wool, 40% Merino, 40% Peruvian Highland Wool, 20% Nylon, 440 yards. So it brought two patterns that are included with the subscription. So one is for a cabled crochet clutch and one is a knit pattern. What I like about it is it, it shows you what the finished product would look like in crochet and knitting. So you can kind of see that the crochet is a lot more intense. I feel the color is more, it doesn't really, I feel the color showcases the black more, like the fabric showcases the black more. This is the yarn. And the knitting kind of looks gray. So this is the yarn. One, I've already got it caked up and one is in the hank. And it's looking a bit, I think the light is making it look greenish, um, but it's marled. So there's white and kind of like a charcoal gray in here. What I plan on making with this is from this book, this top. Originally, I had said I wanted that to be my wedding top, but I feel that I'm gonna drive myself a bit crazy if I intend to crochet my wedding um, outfit. So maybe it'll be like a post-wedding honeymoon outfit maybe. I don't know. I haven't planned a single thing to do with my wedding, so please ignore my ramblings. This aster top. Um, so the first time I saw it worked up was when Emma from the Potter and Bloom podcast worked on this top, and I fell in love with it. She made it in a bright white, and since I saw it, I was like, that would make a beautiful wedding garment. So I have 440. For 440 yards in each hank or in this cake and the pattern calls for 250 grams so what I was going to do and this was inspired by Sandra from Cherry Heart who knit a beautiful pair of socks with this marled, or marled yarn you have to go and check out her podcast uh, if you haven't already and she paired it with a green a beautiful green Kind of like limey green lemon green i think it was lime green so i thought i'm going to make the body of the garment using the marled and then i'm going to make the bands using a lime green of my own because you guys will know i love lime green now i do understand like i know that because of the nature of the yarn the stitches might not be showcased to their advantage so i also plan on making another version of that top with the yarn i had intended for my wedding um it's nothing fancy it's uh, just cotton i love cotton garments so working on that now i haven't started it because i do have projects i want to finish but just having this in a cake look at how springy and just soft it's it smells like a woolly wool but it's a bit softer than that you can see some hairs so it's got a little tiny bit of a halo in it and I absolutely love the feel of this sock yarn it's I'm calling it a sock yarn because it has nylon but you can make whatever you guys want with it so I love I love the feel of this yarn I can't wait to work with it. I think it'll produce a beautiful um, fabric. Right. The second knit crate that I received was the artisan crate. And this was ice cream. I think this was probably my favorite crate just because of the colors of the yarn. These colors are so me, mostly because of the different tones of green and showing up, 
actually a lot brighter on camera, but it's very true to color. Yeah, yeah, it's very true to color. So it's just beautiful. It's a sport weight yarn. It's 100% super wash merino. And I have two hanks. Do you guys just know it's going to be a garment? Why is it going to be a garment? Because the patterns that the Knit Crate box included, one was a knit shawl, which I just think looks beautiful as well. One was a crochet poncho. So I will be making this as well. Um, I don't know when I'm going to have time to make all these garments, but the next one on my list is the Aster Top from Marie Woolen. So I think after that, I will probably start this one. I, I can't, I don't know what else to say about it. The colors are beautiful. They're very well um, saturated. The yarn has no particular scent. It's very neutral and it's 100% superwash merino if I hadn't mentioned it already. And I love sport weight yarn. So yes, and I think what I love most about this Two crate, these two crates that they sent was the fact that you've got a knit and a crochet finished object. So they show you the pictures of what the object is going to look like and you can just compare how the color way will work with each fabric because let's face it, crochet and knit produce two completely different fabrics. Um, and I <laughs> just love the color. I cannot even just so the yarn is from fully spun the colorway is lagoon and it's 329 yards per 100 grams I love it I love it I really 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 love this it's so bright and the colors are so summery Maybe I should bump this up in my queue and make this one before the Aster Top, just because the Aster Top is black. But it will have lime. So, and the final Knit Crate box I received was um, this one. So it's also an artisan crate. It's a uh, modern primary. I really love that they also include these beautiful cardboard. <laughs> so it this cardboard, because I'm not going to show you the back, it lists, well, I can show you the back. I do not understand why not. Okay. So it just kind of lists what's inside. Um, I don't know if you guys can read that. But it just lists what's inside and um, in this case it's Shalimar yarns and oh, oh, oh. again it doesn't really have a smell it's completely neutral it feels beautifully soft I do not feel a prickliness at all which is very surprising because this has 20% kid mohair 70% superwash merino, 20% kid mohair, 10% silk. The silk gives it that beautiful sheen. The 20% mohair kind of gives it that halo. This is a single ply, if I'm not mistaken. It is single ply. And it's from Shalimar Yarns in collaboration with Knit Crate. The colorway is Love and Happiness. And the base is called Air. It really is air. It's light and fluffy, and I cannot believe that I don't even feel the prickliness from the mohair. I think it must be the silk. The silk makes it a wee bit softer. Um, and in addition with this crate, I received super awesome. Give me sunshine, a view, and good yarn. I have to say, I agree. I agree with that. So, in this case, the accompanying patterns that I received are the Wisteria Cardigan, which is knit, and the Wisteria Cowl, 
which is also knit. Um, so I probably will have to find something else to do with this yarn just because I don't, I don't think I want to knit with this. Who knows? Maybe, maybe I will. Maybe I can make, you know, maybe I can make the Tegna top, which is a knit garment and you can make it with two hanks of yarn. So I just want to point out like both these hanks are from the same dye lot and look how different they look hanked up. So you can see there's variations in colors. So if you're knitting with this or crocheting with it, you would probably have to alternate skeins. I mean, hanks, cakes. Right now it's a hank. It will eventually turn into a cake. So you probably will have to just alternate hanks just to, so you don't get a glaringly different maybe front or back or top and bottom it's completely up to you though I even though I will not be making either one of these patterns I do want to hold on to this until I find a good pattern for it for me not that I think those are bad patterns it's just that for my tastes I will probably not use a cowl I'm in Florida and I probably will not make the cardigan just because it kind of looks a little complicated and I don't have time for complicated right now. Um, even though fake purple is not one of my favorite colors, I can really appreciate the subtle tees in this colorway. There's purples, there's blues, and there's even some blue grays, which honestly are my favorite parts of the colorway because I think it all has kind of like a grayish undertone and I do love gray so I cannot recommend this yarn enough. I haven't even worked with it and I'm already recommending it to you guys. Isn't that crazy? Um, if it, um, this by the way will also be the first time I work with a single ply yarn so I wait no I'm lying I'm lying because one of Kayleen's first bases, the DK, was a single ply, and I absolutely loved working with it. It was like a cloud. But this will be my first single ply fingering weight um, yarn. So I will have to get back to you guys on what I make with this, what I will want to make with this. Even though the Tegna top, or Tegna, Tenga, Tegna? I will include all the links as usual down below. Sounds, looks tempting, but it's a fingering weight knit garment. Doesn't sound tempting. Looks tempting, doesn't sound it. So, how likely would I be to recommend Knit Crate? Very likely, that's why I am doing this video. I love all the care that they put into their um, packaging. So the box, I. I kind of showed you the top. This is what it looks like on the inside. And if you take out all your goodies that are included in the box, this is what it says. And I, I just love that. I love that it says that. Um, and it's, you know, it's cardboard, so you could always re put it in the recycling bin which is what I did with my boxes because I, they were taking up a lot of space. I was trying to keep them all stacked up, kind of taking a lot of space. But anyway, getting back to Knit Crate. I'm very likely to recommend them. I loved, like I said, everything about it. And I love that all the um, cardboards are different as well. I think they put a lot of care in choosing their yarns and choosing patterns to showcase their yarn. And like I said, I absolutely love that some of the boxes include a crochet and knit pattern. I think to me that might be the most important part because I appreciate knitting and whilst I 
don't consider myself a knitter. I do think that there tends to be more knit patterns than crochet patterns included in subscription boxes. So for example, like the little box of crochet, I know that's what it was for. It was designed to just um, encourage people to crochet more or, you know, provide this subscription box to people. But you do have knitters that don't knit, I mean, that don't crochet, and you have crocheters that don't knit. So I think Knit Crate covers both their bases. And if you check their website out, they do tell you which boxes include um, the knitting and crochet patterns and which of them only include one a knit pattern. So I will, of course, get back to you on all that I make with this. And just, I'm really, re I can't just, I can't put into words how excited I am to actually start working with these yarns because Yes, I, I know I have a lot of yarn, but um, these are mostly all different bases. This is Peruvian Highland wool and, and just um, merino wool, and the other one's just 100% superwash merino. I have worked with 100% superwash merino before, um, and the other one is silk and mohair, and I've never... Actually, I lie. I lie. I had one spot a blend from Cascade that had mohair, silk, um, and I don't remember the third blend, and it was horrible. <laughs> I did not like working with that yarn, and it tore up very easily. The you know the strands kind of separated. You could just pull if you pull tightly enough, it would completely come apart. But this one, I did the pulling thing, and it. It stays together <laughs> as it should right but anyway now I'm just rambling on so I will let you guys go hopefully I'll be able to upload this today um, Sunday the 15th of July and tomorrow hopefully I'll be able to record a podcast for you guys because I miss chatting to you guys about yarn and I do have a lot of a lot to share. Not all of it is yarn related, but it's all very interesting. <laughs> At least I think it's all interesting. And before I say goodbye, if you do want to hear a bit about what mom and I got up to on our vacation, you can go check out her podcast, Minding Muse. I'll include a link down below and you'll be able to see us podcast in a car. Bye guys. Take care.